Good morning. It is 840, and here are some pictures sent into PetPalsTV.com for our aww, pet moment of the aww. week. Right, Patty? Oh, look at this, Nina. This is a, this is a face a <laughs> mommy can love. Uh, the big Kentuckiana, serving Kentucky and Indiana, Kentuckiana Pug Rescue is holding their 500 Festival of Pugs. Aww. And it's going to be at the Boone County uh, Fairgrounds next Saturday, the 19th, so <laughs> six days from today. And you can bring your pug, you can see some pugs, and maybe uh, put in a little thing that you'd like to adopt a pug. I love pugs because I always say know your breed. It's yes. not an Australian Shepherd. It's not a Border Collie. It's not going to go out and run with you. But mm -hmm. if you want to sit on the sofa and watch Nina and on TV, mm -hmm. they were bred to sit with the Chinese Emperor on the throne. Mm -hmm. So they'll sit there. So if you want a low maintenance, low workout yeah, yeah. pet, that's probably a thing for you. Go say hi to Nina. That is, that is Go good knowledge to have. And uh, You're here with Tom Dock today from Noah's Animal Hospital. Right. He comes in to talk to us whenever there's some big health news about pets, and we're hearing all about this dog flu. I know. Okay, I know. so give us the rundown. Okay, so there's two strains of dog flu. Actually, we've known about one since 2004. This newer one started in about 2015, but here's the big concern right now, is there's big outbreaks in Florida, and for us here in Central Indiana, there's an outbreak right down the road in Louisville, Kentucky. Where, I yeah. mean, how does, this, how does this happen? Where is it coming from? Well, that's a great question. Yeah. We don't know. Okay. Like I said, that from 2004, the original strain, which we designate H3N8, okay. came from horses that actually mutated to dogs and got fit to be in a dog's body. Mm -hmm. The H3N2, we really don't know. There's some speculation that at about the same time it outbroke in Chicago, we had yeah. some dogs coming from Asia, and that's mm. where the flu originates okay. from. Right. So whether or not, we don't know yet, but it's a problem because it can cause a lot of upper respiratory symptoms, drainage from the nose, sneezing, coughing. Okay, that's what I was going to ask, yeah. the symptoms to watch out for. If you are seeing those things, is there a vaccination? Is the, the old vaccination work for this? Our old vaccination does not work, right? Sure. So actually, there there's two vaccines. You have a better and, side hey, than where this. Are you doing? Doing? That's, your bad, <laughs> that's not your good side. Get over so, here. So not we've had Tom, yeah, the vaccine for the <laughs> H3N8, the original strain, for quite a while. The H3N2 came out in 2016, and now we have a, what we call a bivalent. So one shot can protect for both strains on your pets. You just need to make sure that they get their booster on it because most pets here in central Indiana have never been exposed to this disease, right. so they've never been vaccinated for it. So you need to talk with your veterinarian about whether vaccination is appropriate. If you go to doggy daycare, yeah. boarding kennels, oh, yeah. grooming facilities, I mean, you've got poodles at yep. home, so you get them groomed probably. Yep. Even dog parks. Now, the virus doesn't stay around in the environment long, thankfully, but if you've got other animals running around there, there could be dog-to-dog -dog transmission. Any concern about humans? No, I was just going right. to say, no, yeah. no, it does not. No, no concern, no. but cat owners do be aware that here in Indiana, we've actually had a cat diagnosed with it. I think it was up in either Hammond or Calumet at a okay. shelter up there. Also, though, I had people say, oh, no, we're, you know, all the pets are going to die. No, it's like 10%. It's only the, the ones that are compromised. Right, um, so if you've got a really young pet, a really old pet, yes. one who's got immunocompromised, you know, from a disease process, absolutely Absolutely, they're at more risk to get pneumonia and have a more serious case. Most of the time, the worst thing is that you're going to need to quarantine your dog for about three to four weeks and keep them away from other dogs. So just yeah. see your vet if you've got some Absolutely. concerns about this, yeah. and you guys can start the process of taking care of those symptoms or, or a quarantine in a worst case situation. Right, 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 right. Okay, well we appreciate it, guys. We're okay. glad Stewie's nice and healthy. We haven't had any problems, so knock on wood. Right? Oh yeah, no, and yeah. you're going to have a third baby. Third we got to even it out. We've got three dogs. Three. You know? there you go. <laughs> now you got babies, dogs, and a husband and you're not getting rid of any of no, them. No, they're all birds. staying in birds. <laughs> birds That's right. yeah. We need to do another story about how you can coexist with the dogs yes, and they become the, the kids' best it. friends. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Thank you, Nina. Okay, yeah. Stephanie?